Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Uh, we dedicate the shiur Lilun Yishma Devora Fege Bet Shemuel, Ora Devora Bet Shemuel, Esar Rivka Bet Avraham. Monica Bet Fani Menachem Mendel Ben El Hanan. You know, we're holding a few days before the great Siyum Ashas HaOlami, the great end of the whole entire Talmud of the Daf Yomi. We're going to have hundreds of thousands, and I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of thousands of people making Siyum Ashas. Only in, the U- only in New York, in New Jersey, they're going to make, in a stadium, over 100,000 people. We're going to have here in Miami as well, other countries. In Israel, they had already few. They're going to have more. It's something out from, from what we can understand. When they, when they started this concept of the Daf Yomi, the one who started it, his name was Rabbi Meir Shapira. He used to live in Europe at the same time of the Hafez Chaim. And he had a dream. What was his dream? His dream was to have the concept of learning that doesn't matter where do you live and what are you supposed to go, which trips are you supposed to, uh, to go, business trip or just to go for vacation and to go from one country to another. Always have in every single place where you have a community, place where you can go and you can talk with other Yehudim in learning. You find somebody in the, in the plane. And this guy is also holding in the same daf. You can speak with him in the same, the same topic. So well, I heard what was the main motto of Rabbi Shapiro to enter and to make, to build up this concept. So he said over, he said that when he was a child, he remembers that his mother was a tzaddikit. And his, his mother told him he was a genius. So she decided to pay to a lot of rabbis to go and to, and to teach the child different hours. One day, she spoke with one of the rabbis. And she told him, listen, I want you to teach my son tomorrow, 4 p.m. So it's 4 p.m., no problem. I will be, I will be there. The kid was ready. 4 p.m. arrives, and the Rebbe is now showing up. Looks around, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the Rebbe is now showing up. After half an hour, 45 minutes, you understand that that's it. The Rebbe is not going to show up at all. So the kid went back home, and he told his mom, Mom, halas. Right? And the Rebbe didn't come. The mother just heard that the Rebbe is not coming today. She started to cry. Now the child looks at his mom. Says, Mom, why are you crying? I mean, fine. He said, if he's not going to come today, he's going to come tomorrow. Why? I mean, what's, what's the big deal? And then he said, I mean, then he said that his mother answered to him the answer that until his last days, that answer was all the time you know, coming back to his mind. And he said, Mayor, tomorrow is going to be tomorrow. But what about today? You lost one whole day without the learning. What about today? He said, when I open up the concept of Dafyumi, he said, Dafyumi scared some type of people. He said, what? I'm going to commit one Daf every day. But when you, you realize how much time is going to take you the learning of this daf, how much time? Inshallah, it will take you one hour. Today, the programs that I'm making, daf you me, you're going to be surprised. Ten minutes. Hebrew, English, Spanish, Russian, whatever language you want. You want to make an average? 25, 30 minutes daf you me? And the people that are learning Daf Yumi, you can ask them, how do you feel one day that you didn't learn the Daf? I lost the day. I missed the whole entire day. Well, what do you mean you missed the whole day? You have tomorrow. What's the big deal? Yes, tomorrow will be tomorrow. But what about today? Rabotai, we're holding next Sunday, Bezrat Hashem. We're about to start the concept of Daf Yumi again. Starting Masechet Berachot is the easy Masechet. 
very nice, very friendly, very, you know, to start with the, with the right leg. Let's, you know, small effort. If you have a shiur, better with a shiur. If you don't have shiur, you have today in whatever, whatever way you have to hear, you can hear it. You have in the apps, you have websites, you have CDs. I don't know if somebody's using CDs anymore. Yeah, you, you have all type of things to hear the dafiyomi. Commit yourself. 15 minutes, 20 minutes per day. That's it. You're going to see how the concept of dafiyomi is going to change your life. Permit. It's going to change your life. Anyway, I just wanted to, to share with you a nice idea that even though it's connected to Hanukkah, but we're not so far from Hanukkah, even though we passed already, but the message applies to each one of us until today. So someone asked me the following question. Did you hear about the Baba Sali? Baba Sali, did you hear about Baba Sali? The Baba Sali was very famous, besides being a gigantic in Torah and in Kabbalah, also the concept of making miracles was something that every single Jew that went to his house, he saw it. Clear. One of the famous miracles that he had, almost every day, what was the miracle? Arak, you know Arak? He had the battle of Arak. He used to take a battle, one battle. He used to cover it. And hundreds of people were coming to get the blessing of the rabbi. The rabbi was giving them a small cup of Arak. Now you have hundreds and the battle doesn't finish. And it continues. And it doesn't finish. And I will tell you, we have over here, not here in this room, here in the shul, we have his grand-grandson. His grandson, I'm sorry. And he said, not once and not twice we saw it. Every time that we were going to the Babasali, that miracle show up. Everybody saw it. So now let me, let me ask you a question. Why are we not doing... A special event. It's called the Day of Arak. To remember the miracle of the Baba Sali. What? What about Hanukkah? Hanukkah, we add a little bit of oil. And it rests for eight, eight days. Only eight days. You know how much rest the Arak of the Baba Sali? Oh? Uh -huh. Weeks. Why well, we don't do any event about big miracles? Like those miracles. That was the question that I, that I was asked. And you know what's the answer? Rabotei, the answer is very simple. Having miracles by rabbis and by Gidolei Hador, it's not a big deal. But to have a miracle for the whole entire nation, tzadikim and reshaim, simple guys and the complicated guys, everybody being under a miracle, that's a reason why to make a holiday. So now you're going to ask me, why really? We had the married to have such a miracle to everybody. And here comes the answer. We ask throughout the days of Hanukkah, why we don't mention in Al Nisim even a little bit about the miracle of the candles. If the whole purpose of Hanukkah is the miracle of the candles. And the answer is, because Rabotai, candles was an extra bonus. Candles was just a result of the first miracle. The first miracle of the war. Having a small bunch of people fighting against an empire. And if you're going to ask why they had them married to win, and this is the message for all of us. Because Rabotai, whenever you take something and you're ready to give all what you have to reach that goal, you're going to make it. Whenever a Jew understands that that's my goal, I'm going to fight against it, doesn't matter what, and I will reach to it, you're going to find yourself seeing miracles above nature to be able to get to that goal. And if you think that I'm uh, talking too much in the, in the air, Rabotai, ask people around you, people that made a change in their life. Maybe they, do and they did Teshuvah, maybe they wanted to achieve something Siuma Shas, Daf Yomi. They wanted to achieve it. You're going to see how they sweat, how much effort they put. 
But throughout the effort, you're going to see how at the end of the day, they were all ready to get to, get to the goal. Because that's what the Gemara writes. Lefum hagra. According to your effort, your payment is going to come. And the miracle of Hanukkah is a miracle to everybody just to teach you the lesson that if you're ready to put your effort, you're going to get, you're going to, get to the goal. I want to tell you two things. I was giving a shiur somebody in a long time ago in the office. And uh, the first day that I came, I asked him, why, uh, why you want to learn Gemara now? I mean, you're a busy guy. He says, let me tell you. I have a friend, very good friend, very successful guy in business. Friend, you know, he grew up with us. Not only grew up with us, he's still, you know, part of our group. We make uh, an event at night, he comes and he's part of it. And uh, we, we make some barbecues and we go to drink something together. And a few days ago, he calls me up and he tells me, Arye, I want to invite you to a special event. Special event? You're marrying somebody? I mean, I know that uh, your daughter, your oldest, have only 12. What's a special event? He says, Arya, it's my first time finishing the whole entire shas. He told me it was freeze on the phone. So what do you mean finishing the shas? You finish the shas? <laughs> you finish the shas? What are you talking about? I know you. He says, you know, I, I know that you know me, but every day I was taking a small break. In the middle of the day, in my business, I was putting my earphones, and I was hearing the shi'or of, of Daf Yomi online. And today, I'm proud to say that I finished the whole entire shas. I want to invite you, and I'm, being, I'm going to make a huge, huge party to invite everybody of the group. Rabotai, he told me, just that gave him such, such a mo motivation to sit down and to start learning. You know what is that to look behind you and to say, you see all this library? I passed it already. Chachamim are saying that after 120, a person goes up to Shemaim. And a person already learned, even though he didn't understand it 100%, but Olam is sitting down with the Neshama of the person and he teaches him again whatever he learned already in this world. I used to have a friend. He, I saw him reading, reading, reading. What are you reading? He says, I'm reading. Just give my eye just to read. You understand? No, I don't understand. I'm reading. What do you want to read? He says, because 100, after 120, I want Hashem to teach me. So at least I have the basis. Very nice. That's not the, that's not the purpose. Obviously not. The purpose is to understand it. But just to commit ourselves. So I want to tell you that there is a very famous guy today in Israel. He's about the Shuvah. This guy, this guy was a soccer player. <coughs> soccer player that he, gave, that he achieved very high leagues inside the country, inside Israel. Now to understand, this fellow from the age of 15, I believe it was, or 16, he was sent to a special school with a dorm that it was a special school for soccer. He grew up, he got into one league, he got into another group, and he became very famous in the world of soccer in Israel. This guy. I can give you the name if it's, ne if it's necessary. The guy today, and he was saying the story about himself, he said, let me tell you, I did the Shabbat, was Mechalel Shabbat. How you can be playing soccer without doing Chalul Shabbat. You have to go to all type of games and you're using the car. He said that he was going to a Shi'ur once a week. It was in Netanya in Israel. Once a week he was going to the Shi'ur. One day he decided to go to the Shi'ur. And he tells his friend that was coming with him, also a soccer player, he told him, tell me something. What do you say if we come instead of one time a week? We come twice a week. 
He says, my friend, look at me with the big eyes. He says, what? You're crazy? Forget about it. Once a week and that's it. He says, why once a week? He says, uh, what do you mean? If you're going to come twice a week, for sure, I'm going to make the shuvah. If you're going to make the shuvah, I will have to stop playing soccer. And if you're going to stop playing soccer, I'm not going to have parnasa. So halasna, I don't come twice a week. This guy heard those words. He says, this friend of mine is still in the soccer leagues. He became one of the most famous players in Israel. But he doesn't remember that thanks to those words, I made my change in my life. He says, why? I'm going gonna, gonna to explain to you. Imagine a guy comes, you go to a doctor, and the doctor tells you, you know, you have a certain sickness, you have to take a certain medicine twice a week. And you go, and you see the guy taking only once a week. And you ask him, why are you not taking twice a week? He's going to tell you, listen, the doctor says that if I take twice a week, I'm going to be cured. I don't want to be cured. Tipesh. So why are you going to the, to the doctor even? Rabotai said, those words came inside my ear, and I said to myself, what I'm trying to escape from the truth. And then he said the following things. He said, if I'm scared that Borel Olam cannot make me famous, if I'm not playing soccer, that means that I'm not trusting on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He made a change. And let me tell you a secret. Today, he's one of the most successful rabbis in Israel as a speaker. Everybody hears him. He have hundreds of people coming to hear his shiurim. He have his shiurim online all over. And this guy said, Borel Olam, when he is giving you a destination that you have to be famous, don't worry. Hashem have his ways to make you famous. And if you're not supposed to be famous, nothing is going to help you. Rabotai, take a goal. Commit yourself to do a changement. Even a small daf yumi, even a small learning at time. If daf yumi is too much for you, gemara, you know you're getting a... Too, okay, take an advantage of taking, I don't know, 20 minutes per day to hear a shiur. But commit yourself. And you're going to be able to look behind and to say, wow. This, this is all what I achieved. Baruch Adonai Amen, amen.